Hi, in this tutorial we will take a look at two new PineGrow features that give us even more control over developing custom WordPress blocks. So let's take a look at what we have on the page now. So here we have an H1 that represents our fancy heading block. And if we go into the WordPress panel, we see that the block action is already added and the ID is fancy heading, the title is fancy heading. And if we go down into more options, we can notice that the block type is set to hybrid. And this means that the block will be kind of a classic React block in the editor, giving the content editor the best possible editing experience, while at the same time, it will be rendered as a dynamic PHP block on the front end, so that the block is always up to date without ha us having to resave the pages or templates if we do a change to the structure of the block. And down here in style, we can see that the block includes style CSS both on the front end and in the editor. And style CSS defines a fancy heading rule that visually implements the design of this block. So we have padding, background gradient, color, text shadow, and so on. And going down, uh, still on H1 element, we have block attribute action that makes the content of this element editable. So the attribute ID is text, the title is heading text, and this is used as the content of the element. And we take a peek into the attribute options. The default value is set to none. So underscore none, underscore, and this makes the default value empty. Because what we want is when the user adds our block to the page, it should probably like be empty without any content. And by default, if this is not set, the whatever is the current content of the element will be used as the default value. So let's test the block to see what we have so far. So go to WordPress and say export the plugin. And first we have to select the folder into which the plugin will be exported. And this is usually within WP content plugins uh, folder. So let's select it. And this is WP content plugins and I already created fancy heading folder. So I select it now. And if you, you probably first have to create this folder. And I'm ready to save settings and export the plugin. And we get a notice that the main PHP file for the plugin was created in our source project. Now let's jump into WordPress dashboard in plugins where we can see our fancy heading and let's activate it. And with this it is ready to be used. So let's jump into the site editor and here I'm using one of those like empty boilerplate uh, block head block uh, teams because it's fun to also see how our blocks can be used in the content of full site editing, not just as a uh, content of posts and pages. Let's select index uh, template and then go here to add uh, content. So add block and here it is our fancy heading ready to be used. Hello. How are you? So you can notice that it's uh, fully editable right here on the page. So let's save it and preview the, the site. And here it is. If we now go into inspect, we noticed two things. So one is that we are using H1 and we're kind of stuck with using H1 for the heading. 
And the second is that we also got like this really long class automatically generated by WordPress. So first let's make the tag element editable. So this is a new feature in Pinegrow and to use it we simply add a new attribute uh, here in block attributes of the h1 element and let's say this will be level the title will be heading level and it will be used as a tag element tag and then control type should be select and the values can be h1 h2 and h3 and h4 let's export the project and go back into WordPress site editor. Reload it is. And we select the block and now we have the additional property that controls the heading level. So H1, H2, H3. So let's set H3. Save it. And reload the page. Just to make sure that everything is correct. Go to inspect and here we can see now H3 is used for displaying this element. So the second point, how to get rid of this class. So usually these classes are not a problem. Um, and they even give us a, a way to, for example, to scope our CSS styling to this particular block. If we would not have our own class, we could use this one. But for some cases, like when we are developing blocks that are, should really be bare bones, kind of just used for the side structure and we want to minimize all, all the classes and attributes, we can now disable the auto-generated class. I'll go back to Pinegrow and we have to go to the block action, more options, and down here we have a supports field. And that activates like various uh, WordPress editor features for this block. And to disable auto-generated classes, we will use class name equals false. So export the plugin. And if we now just reload the page, we can notice that the WordPress class is gone. And notice that we didn't have to go into the template editor and resave the template. We simply reloaded the page and the block was up to date. And the reason is that we are using hybrid block type. So that means it's React in the editor, but dynamically rendered on the front end every time the page is displayed. So this was very easy to achieve, but uh, let's take a look at something uh, more like th these are existing Pinegrow features, but I heard that many people are not aware of them, so it's a good opportunity to showcase them. So now we, when we added this block, we see it kind of on a, on a blank page in isolation, and we don't really see how it will appear on the target website. And to allow us to do that, we can go into the project panel and then right click on index.html file and select open in wrapper. And then we enter the URL of the page where we want to view this block. So in this case, this is just the front page of our project. Save and open and again save and close because the document will be kind of reopened so we have to save the changes and here it is we can now see our block right there on the front page of our website and you might wonder oh why do we have like two block instances so one the one we can edit with the blue border is our like the the source block our content of index HTML um, document. And then the second one is just the part of the front page 
where we actually added this block into the layout. So it's just there as a part of the wrapper page. And the wrapper elements have like orange bag, um, menus and borders and can't really be edited. We can select them, but they get this wrap notice. So we can only edit the elements with the blue border. So why, why can we then select uh, these elements as well? Well, we could style these elements. We could like help here in the style editor, we could create styles or edit CSS rules that target these elements on the page. But that's not uh, like the, the subject for this tutorial. So let's go back to our block. And down here in support, so, okay, so let, let's first do something else. So now when, at this point, we have the whole page, like the whole website loaded. So it means all the styling, all the CSS variables, are here loaded and ready for us to be used when designing our custom block. So instead of having this uh, hard-coded linear gradient, let's get rid of it, and then go down here into background, click on this exclamation icon, and then go into CSS variables. And now here we have a bunch of uh, gradient presets implemented as uh, CSS variables. So maybe this one. Oh yeah, this one is nice. So if we can use all, all the variables, all the gradients, all the colors or sizes that are defined by the block team or a classic team and exported as uh, CSS variables. So that's very cool. And in addition to that, we can also go into block action and here in supports, we can enable additional features such as background color, text color, gradient, font size. So let's try with this. Export the plugin. Oh, and this is interesting. So here we got the message that some CSS changes are not saved yet and therefore they were not exported. So it's a good idea to save changes before exporting the project. Um, if we want to get like, and that, that only affects CSS st styling changes. So if we have made changes to CSS styling and didn't save it when doing uh, the export, those changes will not be exported. So that's why we get the warning and if we want all the current CSS changes to be exported, we have to save the document first. So we did that. And now let's jump into the uh, WordPress. Let's reload our site, yes. And we can see that now we are using the WordPress gradient. And if we go here, reload the editor. And now our block also got style, styles controls in WordPress, so we can select another gradient, for example. And we can change the text color, the text size. Um, and more. So notice uh, that as soon as we set the background, like the block got additional padding, so it became bigger. And if we go into inspect, we can notice that WordPress added a special class, like has background to the element. And this class then adds this additional padding. But surprisingly, if we like uh, view the front end, the class is here, but the styling is not defined. So there is no additional background, no additional padding around this element. So this is one of those WordPress things. And what we can do, so go back to Pinegrove, and now we will create a new CSS rule that will target all fancy headings that also have, has 
background class. And we will simply, so here we have padding 20, so we will also set padding to 20. And we set the, mar the padding to 20 on all sides. Save the changes, export the plugin, and reload the page in the editor. And now this additional padding is gone and the block looks exactly the same in the editor and on the front end. And the last thing to, to explore, so now how to get rid of this wrapper if we want to see the page as it is. We can go back to Project Panel, right-click on Index HTML and just say Open. So this opens the page uh, as a, itself, a standalone, without the wrapper. But of course now the WordPress styling is not loaded on the page, so we don't see the gradient that is defined by WordPress CSS variable. So viewing the page in the wrapper is very handy when we want to use the site styling in our custom blocks. So hopefully this tutorial was useful and have fun and see you next time.